We're talking about the number one creator of wealth and security and for estate, people yeah. and one of their most important purchases. And like, how is this not in the employee benefits arena? Welcome to Self-Funded with Spencer, sponsored by Pareto Health, Claim Doc, and PlanSight. Whether we're discussing innovative new healthcare strategies, exposing hidden revenue streams or misaligned incentives, or even just cheering on the next generation of this industry, we promise you that you're going to learn something. So thank you for joining us for another great conversation about the future of healthcare. Well, guys, listen, you want to kick off a, a podcast? Let's, let's do it. Let's podcast. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting here with Dave and Tommy Shumway, uh, both of CityWorth, and we're going to talk about something I've never heard before, uh, which is a, a real estate employee benefit. Yeah. Um, so guys, uh, real quick, introduce yourselves. Obviously, I want to hear your story. And then ultimately for the listener, we're going to go down this path of this cool employee benefit that's a real estate focused benefit. But we'll we'll work our way there. So Dave, yeah. why don't we start with you, man? Okay. I was yeah. going to say, my story is probably a little longer than Tommy's. So we start with Tommy then instead? <laughs> well, so Dave, Dave, what is your role? Uh, you're founder of so, City, City Worth, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I started it 12 years ago with my brother who... Uh, we'd run a company prior to that, uh, a nationwide mortgage operation that we started in 97. Okay. Uh, my, my history is I started in 79 after I got out of tech in 78. And, uh, you know, back then when you graduated from college, um, you assume somebody would call you for a job, at least nobody did. So mm -hmm. I just figured out. Hey, I've got a diploma. <laughs> yeah, 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 available, yeah. Come right? on, yeah. come on. And, uh, so then I got into the mortgage business. A friend got me in and, uh. You know, so I've been in it for 45 years, started my first company in 87. Um, and that was a disaster. It lasted less than a year, which is kind of, you know, what people say, sure. you know, the preparation. 97, that one was much more successful. Uh, but along that journey, it was tough. I mean, yeah. if you're kind of the entrepreneurial guy, you're going to have those moments where you're down in the dumps, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're you know, I was kind of a big shot in the little pond of mortgage bankers. And then we started our own company and lost money and started investing and lost money. And, you know, and all the way along, we were, you know, having more kids. And in 96, when Tommy was born, was a year we declared bankruptcy. Jeez. So, yeah. So, um, and, and it was all, it was all uphill from there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's, that's crazy. Right. Cause uh, I've had one other gentleman that joined the podcast that he was in the, uh, um, home building business, custom yeah. home building business, flying high, doing great. And I think it was the, the crash of 08 that ultimately he was sitting on too much inventory and he couldn't sell it and he couldn't move it for the prices he needed. And he had to file bankruptcy. Lo and behold, he eventually ends up getting in the insurance business and he had a really amazing, Redemption art, Ross yeah. Connor, shout out to Ross Connor. Yeah. Really awesome story. But I think you had a pretty similar redemption arc as well. So Tommy enters the fold and what child was Tommy? Tommy's number six. Number six. Okay. Yeah. And right. um and six so, of did I hear of nine? Six of nine, yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, Tommy. yeah. We still we were still in a good rhythm for having kids and, you know, have three more, but uh yeah, so but you, you filed for bank. So what happened uh, with that story there? So um what happened was we didn't have enough money to file for bankruptcy. So we, it, it was, we it was postponed. And then I literally went to office Depot, got the bankruptcy papers, went to court on my own, filed it all because we didn't have the extra thousand dollars to pay mm -hmm. for bankruptcy, uh, attorney for it. You know, at that time it was kind of, that seems part. almost like unbelievable that you, you wouldn't think about, I don't have enough money to file for bankruptcy, but obviously there's <laughs> attorney fees and yeah, things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, it was a good life lesson. I know, I, I know what goes on. And, and I, I say to people that, you know, my experiences are great for all of my, our customers because some of the customers are, you know, where I was and some of them where I went to. So, yeah. I, in 96, we filed, but in, in my journey from the lessons I learned starting in 92, I started to do a lot of homework. I started reading a lot of self-help books, started okay. to listen to a lot of stuff, started, you know, modeling after what it would take to become successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, um, six years later, it started to pay off and we started another company and, um, you know, in 
we got some money from people and 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 they well what, what was the kind of the biggest life lesson going through that uh, bankruptcy uh journey right because i mean to get out of that a lot of people that might ruin them um whether psychologically it ruins them their confidence level or even just pulling themselves out of that to have what would resemble even a relatively successful life you were obviously able to do that relatively quickly and we're going to talk about that next but um like what was the biggest takeaway from that so don't ever let yourself get in the way Okay. Don't ever let, don't, you, you just keep your mindset and know that, um, that I was certain that I was meant to do more than I'd done. Okay. And, and that was my whole mindset. And then in order to do that, I had to, you know, be disciplined with. What did you, do you think you'd be where you are today without having that event happen? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, those are the you know, that's the blood and guts of it all on the yeah. journey that you have to feel those. And then it gives you the fuels, the passion to do and be even more. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't think so. And those are, you know. Well, how did you get, so how did you uh, recover then? I'd love to hear that. Like, so what was the next steps? Okay, I filed for bankruptcy. Uh, you got six child uh, joins the world, obviously. yeah. yeah. You got to feed them, you got a wife and kiddos and all those. And so how do you turn things around? So uh, actually a buddy of mine came to me in 97 and said, hey, you were a really good mortgage banker. And at the time I was doing health and fitness products. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, in 92, I started this whole vitamin deal and all that uh, uh, antioxidants, free radical activity and all that stuff. And, um, and I was starving though. So... Um, he came to me and said, you're really good. I got a great idea. We can take a product, a mortgage product, um, refinance people out of debt, make it a second trust and not really care about what the loan to value is. I don't want to get into yeah, too much. Yeah, that's okay. But, um, and we can do it at 12 and take the 30 and 25% credit cards and do it. And I went home that night and I said, yeah, let's do it. I, you know, and, um, and then I started looking at data on that. I was like, wow, this could be really big. And so I went to him and his partner and- um, and so we negotiated a deal and my, and I get home and, and, uh, and, uh, my wife says, Oh, okay, well, great. How much salary are you getting for your new job? And I, said, <laughs> well, I got even better news. I don't, I'm not taking any salary. I get one salary. third, yeah. one third of the profit. She's like, you are nuts. You yeah, are crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's what we were talking about earlier is that, you know, someone that files bankruptcy, most people would go into a safe salary job next sure. instead of going and trying to create something new, which I think it's just just the mindset. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a safety thing, yeah. right? When it was, was your own stubbornness at play a little bit there, like betting on yourself and believing in yourself? Had to, yeah. yeah. Had to, yeah, yeah. Had to, yeah. So how did, so like, obviously, there's a there's a runway to reach profitability where you're making any money, right? So yeah. how did you survive? How did you feed the kiddos and all that during that, that time? So um, my wife started actively working. She was doing catering jobs. Okay. And... Um, getting down to the humble levels, I was driving a truck, which I could have dri driven for 24 straight hours and not made enough to pay for the kiddos. And, um, and then, so I started doing the catering as it turns out, one of the catering events was the mortgage and real estate people that I was associated wow. with in the past. So it was moderately embarrassing, but you know, it's just part of the journey. Man, and, that, I mean, just, yeah, honestly, you mentioned the word humbleness, but you're absolutely right. Right. But it's like, didn't let pride get in the way. Ultimately decided I'm going to get myself out of this. Maybe did you have a little bit of that? I might want to prove some people wrong. I mean, did you have any of that fuel inside well, you, of you, you as well? Yeah, I mean, because in part of my studies, the the, the uh, one of the sayings is success is your best revenge. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So yeah. so yeah, so this uh, this buddy of mine uh, had another partner, and that partner didn't have the highest level of integrity. So I said, I can't stay here. I got to go. I got to go. We'll go start our own and um, we'll find the money and do all that. So I took that partner with me and uh, a brother of mine. And, you know, we, we raised enough money. My, my wife's parents gave us a little money. And um, I mean, we soared. I mean, first year we struggled a little, a little bit, did a joint venture with a bank. And then Second year, it just started going. And was this the origins of Cityworth or no? Was this pre no. Cityworth? Yeah, okay. this is pre Cityworth. Okay. This was the late 90s. Okay, gotcha. And we had an amazing run uh, where, you know, like I said, we went from poverty to private jets. And, uh, 
And so it was a lot of fun. And so my kids, um, at the time, the oldest was 10, 11, when we really started rolling in the dough. Um, so they had some poor years in there, but a lot of them, like Tommy didn't, didn't really know any of the struggles. Yeah, but uh, Tommy, a silver spoon in his mouth, right? All the way, yeah, easy, there. easy street, private school, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> so well, um, it's funny. I was relating to you know you were sharing a story with me about kind of feeding your kids, or I forgot exactly what the story was, and relating to you on that. I think I didn't grow up poor, and I never would say I wouldn't want to try to paint that picture. But we did have times where my parents absolutely struggled, and I was telling you the beanie weenie story that I've told before on this podcast. But I think. Seeing that, seeing my dad was in the construction business, so he'd come home dirty and sweaty and tired, chipped his, broke off a tooth one day. I mean, yeah. like, he did hard stuff yeah. to earn mm -hmm. a living. And then ultimately, he bore the fruit from yeah. that. But I witnessed that growing up in the formidable years, and I go, okay, like, this is teaching me a lot about life. Obviously, I want my children to grow up in uh, maybe a better version of that, but it's given me the perspective that I felt I needed to shape me as a human being. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad I went through that yeah. as a young kid. Yeah. Pareto Health is the manager of the largest employee benefits group captive in the United States. And it's also now the main sponsor of the Self Funded with Spencer podcast. I chose to partner with Pareto Health for three main reasons. Number one, their dedication to improving the world of health benefits. Number two, their mission to reduce volatility and to make self-funding simple for mid-sized employers. And number three, the strength and scale of their program. With over 2,300 member groups and more than $1 billion of stop-loss premium under management, Pareto Health is the most robust solution of its kind in the country, period. Stay tuned for more information because I'm sure I'll be featuring them on an episode of the podcast very soon. Visit Pareto Health at ParetoHealth.com or follow them on LinkedIn to stay up to date on the latest news and developments. When I think now, this whole sort of uh, journey we're on now where the company hasn't been doing well for the past three years, um, we've lost a good deal of money. And now we're, you know, now we're starting to, but I think it was important for the kids to be on part of that journey yeah. that they didn't know that there was an endless supply of money continuously flowing so that now we got to all get down, roll our sleeves up and make this all happen. And to give people some background, it's not out of the nine kids, everyone has worked at City Worth at one point. Okay. There's a few that are, you know, out on their own doing real estate investing and, um, the youngest is still in college, but and what is your role? Like, let's go ahead. And I want to address it. Yeah, like, so what you there. I started in real estate as a real estate agent. So City Worth, we have the real estate, we have the mortgage, and then we have the benefit, which we've just created in the in the past couple of years. But I started when I was twenty, so about seven years ago. Got my real estate license, and then did that for about six years, and I'm still licensed, but I went into the benefit side. So. We're, uh, we're driving the operation where my title is the, the VP of benefits. So I do a lot of the, the marketing, the technology. A lot of people, what we say is he's, Dave's like the, the Steve Jobs, and then I'm more the Steve um, Wozniak. Yeah, 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 Wozniak. Yeah, so yeah. it works well. What was well. it like being a real estate agent at 20? Is it hard to build up a network when you're that age? I mean, because I don't know if the people, is there ageism involved where they're like, does this kid know what he's doing? Or tell, tell me about life. Well, he was, it was summertime from, he was at JMU. He came okay. home for the summer and he said, I'm going to get my license. I'll study. It'll take me two weeks and I'll and have did it. You, yeah, you did it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the way our business works is way different than most traditional re real estate agents because most real estate agents are on their own. It's like you're running your own business at CityWorth. Everyone's W-2 employees and City Earth was sending out mailers to get people pre-approved for loans. And then we have the one-stop shop where they get a real estate agent as well. So it's not like I was having to tap into my personal network. Yeah. Like even now, your elbow I have a few friends. Yeah. I have yeah. a few yeah. friends that can uh, buy homes, right? right? And so, yeah, the personal network just wasn't really there. And you know, we've talked about the the financial struggles. That's harder than ever for people to buy Absolutely. homes and we have some of those solutions that at Cityworth that that we've created. Yeah, so the the real estate side, but I I got super, you know, advanced at such a young age because the company was feeding us all these deals and I was yeah. doing so many transactions where a lot of people say, "Okay, you know, I've been in the real estate agent or industry for 20 years." 
what have you done? How many transactions have you done during those 20 years? Were you doing that part time where yeah. if you do it for five years straight and you're doing and you're selling 30 homes a year, you know, you can you can pick up some some good experience from that. So, yeah, I mean, well, are most real estate agents just for some context, are they most of them part time? I mean, is a lot of people try to dabble or is it the majority full time and there just happens to be this cohort of part timers over here? So many come in whimsically. OK. Um, think, oh, teacher, I can do this. I want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I get one commission check, that's enough for me. Yeah. Uh, now there are some really good ones. Sure, there are some really sure, sure. good ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and, and, but a lot of them that I'm shocked people would use. I met this lady, <laughs> nice lady at church. She does real estate on the side, and I'm going to use her to buy my home. Okay. What? what? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, you're going to buy a five hundred thousand dollar home, and you're going to use. Yeah. So. Um, that's scary. I mean, honestly, that's scary, but that's, it's no different. And just in my business related to healthcare, it's no different than you talking to your neighbor and go, Oh yeah, I had my knee over uh, Dr. John. He's great. And you're like, yep. are you sure he's great? Yeah, yeah. He just happened <laughs> to be the one that you stumbled upon, but that's how, that is so often how these referrals happen is so-and-so within my network says I should go here to get this really extensive operation done. Yeah. And I do no more investigation than I got the name from, from my neighbor. Like, yeah. It's just kind of absurd. And it sounds like it happens a lot yeah. in real estate too. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to change that. I mean, that was part of our journey on when we start. Yeah, so let's get to Cityworth. And I want to understand your model because Tommy was alluding to the fact that folks are on salary, they're W-2. It's a really different model. That that will lay the foundation for when we get to your benefit. But with the model that's different than what I typically think of a real estate brokerage and how their life works, why don't you position that for us real quick? Yeah. When, when we came in this time around, we said, well, let's, you know, let's serve the underserved. Let's go after, you know, and we were just a mortgage operation at the time, not just, but we were a mortgage operation looking to go on a, on a national level. And today we're multi-state. Okay. Um, and, um, and, and so we were spending tons of money on getting the underserved in and, and working on their credit and their savings and negotiating, working on our negotiating skills so that we could go to the sellers and ask for money and all that. And then, you know, kind of the missing link in there was the agent. We weren't mm -hmm. teaching and training them anything. So they didn't really understand our passion for helping these people okay. and what we wanted to do. And, and again, we talked about a number of them being part-time and a number of them, if the loan, if this transaction doesn't go today, I'm not going to be able to pay my mortgage or rent or whatever it is. And so- At least the desperation. Yeah, 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 total yeah. desperation. So kind of misaligned with really, you know, the passion to help the customer. Um, so we started our own company. And then we said, but we can't be the same way. We can't be all these independent agents. Yeah. Uh, we want everybody full time. We want them all committed. We want them in. We're going to, you know, help them get customers in the door. And then they're going to, you know, learn the process that it takes to be, you know, at that premium level for customers. And in order to do that, we had to change the model. Okay. And so we went from, you know, this neighborhood approach with, almost all 2 million use this neighborhood approach. They don't go outside of like a 10 mile radius right. and that's it. And I know this neighborhood better than everybody else. And from your own eyes only, right? right. Not, not necessarily the real picture, but from your own eyes. And that's where I sell all of it. I'm going to farm it and do all that. And, you know, and, um, and, and we said, that's restrictive. You don't need to do that. There's a, there's another way. And, and so we developed this whole home showing model, which was, okay, an agent has a license for the whole state. Let's use it. Yeah. Let's use the whole state. Yeah. And all the information's out there on the internet, all of the information on neighborhoods, sales prices, uh, 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 comparables, everything you need to know is online. And all we have to do is and find out how to get them in the door. Yeah. Well, let's use the resources that are there. The millions of agents up and down, we'll just hire them when we need them in the local market and they'll go open the doors for us. Okay. So like, I'm going to make sure I unpack that and understand it properly. So rather than a localized real estate agent working within a certain radius where they're not only handling the contractual side, but they're also going and showing the home, right? Yeah. You guys have split those two things apart and yeah. said, you can be centralized and work on the contract based on where the house is. We city worth will pay somebody to go open that door and pay them what a flat rate, an hourly rate. How does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's usually, I mean, in the price area, it's 30 to $35. Okay. To so just open the door for one home. And are yes. they actually walking the home with the, the buyer potentially as well? They can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so the, by splitting those two things apart then and centralizing the expertise on the contractual side, 
that they're no longer constrained by geography, right? Yeah. So they're more efficient, I would yeah. presume, yeah. as well. What else is a benefit of that type of model? Because it, it almost sounds like an Uber model. A yeah. Little bit yeah, 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 it is. It really, I mean, we kind of took some of the ideas from you know Uber and Amazon and their local approach to things. And um, so what happens is then each agent deals with more customers because they're not, you know, 50, 60 percent of the time is spent driving for yep. your normal agent. So that time is now spent on finding new customers to help. And so like our model, you could do five to 10 transactions a month in a typical model. It's not even five a year. Mm. So your level of expertise, because you're working yeah. uh, um, so many different customers, uh, starts to be exponential over you know, your standard agent. So uh, we can help more people in a broader area. And then we didn't know this at the time, but then it opens up beautifully for a benefit. Because if you got an office in you know, uh, Dallas and you have one in Houston and you have one in Austin, we got you covered on all of them. We yep. don't have to go, oh, Sally takes care of this. And uh, well, we got the hundred agents that you need for all that. Okay. Not for that big meat, right? Not for the negotiating and not for the analytics and not for all of that. You you don't want that person for opening the door? Sure. Sure. How long you have your license? Doesn't matter. Do you, yeah, how do you source the So are all the people that are the door openers that are licensed real estate agents? Yes. Okay. So today. They, today. Yeah. So they're typically probably newer or, you know, not doing as much volume. Tell yeah, me I mean, I had yeah. people that were just starting out or some really old people that were, you know, transitioning out out of the business and they didn't they didn't want to deal with all that they just wanted to go show the homes do what they like to yeah, do yeah and you know the it's important on the agent experience but also the customer experience is so much better because we have the efficiency and in, in the customers are on their own schedule yeah and so the example that I like to give is an agent has a million dollar client and then they have a client that's buying a two hundred thousand dollar home and both the clients want to go out on Saturday. Well, who do you think the agent's going to take out? The million dollar The million person. dollar yeah, client. Yeah. And yeah. so the way that our model works is that it's totally customer centric where, hey, you want to go out within 30 minutes? Hey, we can set yeah. it up right now. I'm, I'm in the office. I'm always ready to, to schedule. I, I have my assistants that are showing the home. So it works out uh, pretty well. well I, can see, I can give you a real world experience. When my wife and I were looking to leave our condo and buy our first kind of starter home, um, we were using a friend of a friend, real estate agent. She was great, but she was also pregnant at the time. And so it was difficult. She lived south in Mansfield. We were up here in Frisco. So for some context for the listeners, that's about an hour away. Oh, wow. And we'd want to go see a few homes or, hey, we found one on uh, Estately. Can we go see it tonight? And she's like, ah, I don't know if I can get there. And so what she en ended up doing is saying, hey, well, I've got somebody that I think is perfect that knows that area better, has now been our real estate agent for the last few transactions. But they were local. They were close to us. And she could get there immediately, right? Yeah. And so just that, you think an hour constraint. What if it was statewide, right? The geography constraint there. Yeah. And so we got kind of a, an accidental experience, I think, of what you guys are yeah. providing. Because ultimately, for us as buyers, we needed speed. It was during a very competitive time in the real estate market. So we needed to get to that house as soon as possible to find out if we want to make an offer. Yeah. And so that lag time, having to wait for the previous agent, ended up killing opportunities. Yeah. Um, so I could see how this, like that speed to, oh, I can get you in 30 minutes. We'll get you in the door and get you looking at it. That's a huge benefit to a customer. For sure. Yeah, yeah, and your referral on that, you lucked out if you found a good one because we did. Sometimes yeah, they pawn them off, say, "Oh, here's a really good referral." Not nah, always yeah. on that. Yeah. So, well, hundred yeah. percent right because there was yeah. no data behind it. It's yeah. no different than the neighbor recommending the surgeon at that point. Yeah. We yeah. just happened to luck into a good one. Yeah. And we did. Plan Sight is a complete game changer in the world of insurance brokerage. As a broker. You know how time consuming and error prone the traditional RFP process can be. But what if I told you there's a better way? PlanSight is the only end-to-end -end RFP solution on the market made specifically for benefits agencies. It's like having a superpower that gets you an average of eight to 10 hours back per employer renewal per year. And the best part, PlanSight supports all carriers, all funding types, and all group sizes for over 20 different benefits. If you're ready to make your RFP process faster, more efficient, and more profitable, it's time to call PlanSight. Visit PlanSight.com now to book a free demo and discover the future of insurance renewals. But so then that, that model of sort of that decentralizing 
Like, how do you expand that? Is it in all 50 states? Is it certain geographies you're doing this today? Like, tell me a little bit more about so, where you can access it. So now we're in 10 states, 10 states and, and okay. looking to expand beyond that. What, uh, what, what does it take to expand to a new state? So on the mortgage side, it's pretty easy. You get okay. your license and then bankers can get their license. It's loan officers. Okay. On the real estate side, there's just another layer in there and that's you have to have a broker there. So okay. it's a little bit more complex, but we've done it in 10 states. So we're confident we can do it in sure. you know, the, the next. Well, so 40. when did the idea of this benefit, because ultimately that's what this conversation was leading up to is this idea of there's an employee benefit it's yeah. real estate focus. Yeah. How did this thing, how did that come to be? So it started coming when, you know, we were looking at what other ways can we expand? Because, you know, it was kind of this whole sort of thought process that I had. We were meant to impact more lives than we have. Um, and we were, you know, meant to uh, be bigger than we are today. And what we noticed was, direct mail responses deteriorating, social media became a disaster. The integrity of, you know, a lot of the, mm. the Facebook and the Instagram stuff and, and the price was going up. Okay. And so um, we said, well, what are the other outlets? What, I mean, it was kind of like, hey, wait, I mean, our customers need to have a job. Mm -hmm. Why? Why don't we put it in the benefit arena? I mean, it was just kind of the bridge. Did you guys have any connection to insurance or benefits in the past? Okay. None. So what, what ultimately stimulated that as a possible distribution channel? Because I, I can see the connection, but originally, like you're one of the first people, if not the only person I've ever heard think along those lines. Yeah. So did you have a friend in the business or how did you even think of this idea None. of a benefit? Okay. None. And I can't even remember, but it was about four years ago, we started the discussions and then it was, we, it was literally like, wait, you have, I mean, most of them have to be employed. So why don't, and, and then we went like, I mean, it was just like a aha moment. We said, wait, I mean, why isn't real estate in the benefit arena now? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got insurance products. I mean, you've got 401ks. I mean, you even have pet insurance in there now. Yeah, you have, I mean, you have literally wellness benefits. You have yeah. a financial well-being benefit. I mean, the, the sky's the limit, yeah. really. You're talking about the number one creator of wealth and security in for people yeah. and one of their most important purchases. And like, how is this not in the employee benefits arena? Yeah. And really the answer is, the real estate business has been so localized and it, it's everyone is so independent. There's no companies that are coming together with with ideas to to match the real estate, match the mortgage and, and make the the process super simple for sure. for the customers. So once we did that, we said, this is actually the perfect model and we can go statewide. So if a company has offices in different locations, even different states where we cover the East Coast and in Texas, 10 states, which actually is one third of the population, the the states that we cover. Okay, and just the way that our model works, it, it works out perfectly for to offer it as an employee benefit. And, and so, as an employee benefit, so it solves for the down payment or helping with the down payment, right? So, why don't you position what the benefit actually does for for the audience? So, uh, there's a number of things. First and foremost, I mean, we were uh, on a on a kind of a podcast like conversation the other day, the City Were Show. And one of the agents said exactly, the money is there. So we give them big savings because of the way we channel it. So we're, they're going to get um, um, big savings when they use us. But that's not why they use us. They use us for our premium service okay. because our skill level is so much higher that we're going to do more for them. It, um, and one of the points they made was, you know, people whittle away at a half a point here and there on the mortgage side. I'm going to step in and get them twenty thousand dollars in savings on the house and twenty on the closing costs. I'm the negotiator. I'm, sure. you know, our levels are so much higher on that. So the they're going to get the service to buy where they want to, you know? Mm -hmm. So even if you live in Dallas right now, you say, no, 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 I want to buy in, you know, Houston. We got you, you mm -hmm. know? So the benefit has the ability to extend out wherever they, they want to go. And then in addition to that, they get, you know, they get the service, which is necessary, which is real estate and mortgage combined. So all our agents and bankers know together what each other's doing. There's one system sure. that tells all. And, um, and then, so we give them a 1% discount on, so if you buy a half a million dollar home, you're going to get $5,000 from us. Okay. And then in addition to that, we go to the companies and say, Hey, 
there's a great benefit for your employees. If you want to give money, you can, and we'll put together a retention agreement for you. Yeah. So, so that if you want somebody to stay for two years or three years or four years, it's all completely, you know. And so the employer is ultimately deciding, hey, I would like to give up to X amount of money. So let's say it's $10,000. So as an employee benefit, they're providing, was it, would you call it down payment assistance or what would yes. you call it? Okay, yeah. so, so then, but they will tie that, the company then will tie that to retention of that employee for a certain period of time. So yes. you guys are helping with the contract yes. there as yes. well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then talk to me, so that's a, that is a taxable benefit ultimately. Yes. Um, there, is there a framework in place today legally for an employer to provide this money or is it, there isn't really any constraints? So, so yeah, yeah, no, because it's, it's like a bonus. Yeah. Oh, it's the like payroll a bonus, bonus okay. that's the way that it's structured. But it's a payroll bonus specifically for use as a down payment assistance tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then is it up to the employer to decide how long that employee needs to stay in order to, uh, what completely would we say? Completely customizable. Okay. Yeah, okay. completely customizable. So if they want to, um, you know, if they want to stay for two years or four years or five years, and then there has to be, it has to be aligned with the value, right? You couldn't say, I'm going to give you a thousand. I want you to stay for 10 years. No, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. yeah, that won't work. But um, you have to retire here for 500 <laughs> yeah, yeah, bucks. Yeah, you're no, here. No, thank a you. A thousand, that's it. Um, but I'm just naturally, like, I'm responding to that as a human being, right? It's like, if, if I knew my employer was going to, let's use a round number of 10 grand, and I had to stay for two years, but they're going to give me $10,000 of down payment assistance as a bonus. I mean, what an amazing benefit. I'm going to feel loyal to that company. I'm going to feel even obligated to do a great job. I can see how that creates an element of stickiness yeah. uh, mm -hmm. for sure. Was that originally intent though? Was like, oh, we want to do this so that that employer benefits from a retention standpoint, or did that naturally happen as you're getting feedback from those employers who are using it? No, it was, a, it was an add-on okay. that we talked that, about. Yeah, that yeah. was an add-on feature because to, to start, we were our real estate, our mortgage, we can provide these discounts that go towards the closing costs and we can educate the employees, do these webinars and instill this belief because a lot of people, you know, the reason they don't buy is they don't believe that they can, Yeah. right? And so we, we're providing these solutions to do everything that we, we can. Then we said, well, let's go one step further. Let's ask the company to contribute. Why should they can contribute, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if we tie them to a retention agreement, then it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, absolutely right, because there has to be some reciprocity. I mean, it doesn't have to be strong-arming them into taking that, but ultimately, the company should have some benefit because they're essentially gifting dollars, right, yeah. um, to them. And so I could see tying it to uh, their tenure makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's no dissimilar to... Um, hey, we're going to help you with education if you want to go back to college. But if you yeah. want to go back to college, we need you to stay here for two years after you graduate yeah. or whatever. Right? Yeah. I mean, that Same. seems like a yeah. reasonable ask for an employer uh, to do that. It's just what has stopped employers from doing this in the past? Why, why hasn't this been done before? You know, I think it's a lot like any of the, the, uh, the good ideas, wh way, the way I look at it, that come along is that um, some may have attempted to do some sort of um, uh, system like this, some sort of idea like this, but, you know, it takes, a um, a lot of, uh, passion and a lot of stick to itiveness yeah. because building this whole process that we've done so far, uh, you know, there's a lot of rejection, a lot of, you know, this isn't going to work a lot of, uh, you know, ignoring and, mm -hmm. and all that. And, in the determination. So it has probably been thought of before. There's a little, little times where people have said, oh, I should have my own real estate agent for it or some portion of it. Right. Um, but but you, basically the whole solution needed to be in place for this benefit to, to actually work is what I'm hearing. From yeah. You. I mean, yeah. it's completely amazing yeah. when you use it. It's completely, when you tie it to a company and the company, I mean, down to one of the things we haven't really talked about is we have a private portal for the customer. Mm -hmm. So the company gets their own portal that each customer can go into um, with the number one crime out there today being identity theft. Mm -hmm. theft. You don't want your employers out there on the internet as you know, you know for buying a home, which you get you know, just pelleted with, I'm your agent, I'm your banker, I'm right. your this, yeah. you know. And, um, and so a private portal does all that you, you get, there's your agent assigned to you. There's your banker assigned to you. The whole thing is set out just, um, beautifully for. Well, and so since it's a benefit, right. And this would be a group benefit ultimately because the employer is sponsoring that, um, 
do you, you go through brokers, right? I mean, insurance brokers. So yeah. tell me your uh, kind of your experience. I've been selling into brokers for over a decade, right? And I kind of understand that persona. But is that a new kind of thing to position a benefit with an insurance broker or agent? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we started out um, with our broker, okay. uh, NFP. And, and he said, wow, this, you know, the regional guy said, yeah, this sounds really great. I'm going to send you down to the uh, innovations guy. Yeah. And a great guy, great guy, he was like, wow, this is incredible. Let's, you know, and then, you know, the process of getting through, it takes a long time and you got to, you got to be, you sure. know, you got to be ready for that. But we found so many people so enthusiastic for it. You know, it gave us the adrenaline to keep going. Absolutely, yeah. So the, and, and it's amazing because most of their life has been set, spent talking about insurance. So then to transfer this over this to a new life, a new beginning, right? Because all about insurance is, oh, when do you use insurance? when you're hurt or sick or any of that. So, and now we're saying, okay, now we want you to talk about a benefit that is new life. It's a new benefit sure. for, uh, and um, so there's a lot of them that are really enthusiastic, but it's inserting the benefit into them. Well, this is certainly a quality of life improver, right? I mean, this is something that, um, you know, there are benefits that fall in a bucket. We need to have it, right? This yeah. is a mandate. Yeah. Then there are things that are nice to have and enhance that. And this falls in a bucket of like, now I actually want to proactively try to improve the quality of life in my employees, because I'm thinking about as an employer, if I know, well, one night, let's say I've tied that to them staying for three years. Awesome. A great employee. I want to keep them for three years. Yeah. Plus now I've perhaps helped them for the first time, possibly buy a house, start building equity in a home ultimately as well. And then just the stability that comes with home ownership versus perhaps renting, which I think you were telling me statistics, the average amount of time that a renter moves versus a homeowner, it's something like two and a half years for a renter and 13 years for a, a yeah. homeowner. So their life is more stable. Well, mm -hmm. what does that do for the quality of their productivity when they go back to work? I mean, I think there would be potentially a snowball's effect, not to mention that if my employer helped me buy my first home, as an example, I'm going to be so grateful for my life for that, especially 100%. if my kids start there or my kids grow up in that home. I mean, I just think the, the long-term psychological impact of that has got to be huge. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, and, um, and we forget what it was like to buy our first home, but just kind of the energy and the, and, and the, you know, the new beginnings for you, imagining new possibilities and what you get to do, it's yours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. De decorating, especially now. Paint the people... walls, whatever color. Yeah. I mean, it's simple things that you like, you take for granted, right? It's yeah. the, the ability to customize it and make it your home. And the employer has an opportunity to, to help facilitate that, which yeah. I think is awesome. And so it kind of covers a lot of this stuff, right? I mean, it can improve your physical health, your mental health, right? I mean, the one, latest study says you live longer if you're a homeowner. Yeah. I <laughs> okay. Do. And it, what is the stat on the wealth, uh, the net worth, uh, your lifetime like net worth if you own a home versus rent your whole life? So if you're a homeowner, you have 45 times the net worth of a renter. At the point of retirement? At the or, point yeah, of yeah, retirement. Yeah, but they're just, that's exorbitantly yeah. uh, different, right? It's, it just, that speaks to, like you were saying, Tommy, the number one wealth creator in the United States for most mm -hmm. people is, is real estate. ClaimDoc is a medical claim auditing and member advocacy company. We provide fiduciary services to employer-sponsored benefit plans, allowing them to create an environment where we ensure that the benefit plans are being charged in a fair and reasonable basis. My business is basically people, and it become a real simple transition. We thought it was gonna be far more complex. I've saved We'll say hundreds of thousands of dollars. I could not say enough about Claim Doc. Um, one thing that I we were talking about over coffee, and I would be remiss not to ask you, Tommy, is this idea of a double up benefit. You were telling me this is really cool, and I think if we start, you're, this whole conversation seems to be around moving barriers to entry to get into a home. Mm -hmm. So why don't you explain to the audience what the double up benefit is? Because I think that's really cool, and I'd never heard it before. Yeah, and, and that's been our mission all along: is try to help people find solutions to be able to become homeowners. And one of the barriers that people face is they don't have enough money for, for down payment or they can't qualify for the house that they want to live in because home prices have gone up, interest rates are higher. And so a lot of people can't afford to buy a home on their own. Right. And also Gen Z millennials are getting married much later in life. And so that's usually the path that people take is they, they get married and then they buy a home. And the reason they can do that is because they have the dual income. And so what a double up is, is two people buying a home that aren't married. So friends, family, coworkers, current roommates, you combine assets, you split the down payment, you 
split the monthly payment, the mu- the maintenance fee, and and what we do on our end is we we help them on the real estate side, we give them the loan, and then we create a double up agreement which goes through the equity terms, goes through stuff like roommate possibilities. Yeah, like, you're telling me to go so far as, hey, you do the laundry and you do the dishes. You actually write that up in that double up agreement, right? Right, and so I've done two double ups myself. I doubled up with my brother, bought a house in Virginia. We now actually rent that out and I moved down to Florida and we, we were expanding the the benefit operation down in Florida. And so I bought a home with my sister and my brother-in-law. And okay. so we split everything a third. So the way that it works is, you know, we <laughs> Who split- Who does what in that arrangement then? Yeah, so even, so it was the, mo- the money. So I, I paid a third of the down payment, a third okay. of the monthly payment. And uh, the, you know, even stuff like the YouTube TV, I'll, you know, I'll pay my third. It's kind of funny in that way. But also it works out in- you know, when you're buying a home, you have a little bit more responsibility and sure. that's what people are scared about. And the double up, you, you have two people coming together. And so my brother-in-law is super handy and he'll do the, the mow the grass and all the lawn care. My sister is a really good cook. She'll cook the food. And then, you know, I end up with the dishes. So it kind of works out for well, everyone. This is amazing, right? And I, how, how did I have this misconception? You said it's a common misconception that you can buy a home with a non-relative, right? I just presumed that there was some sort of limitation there that it had to be some relationship that existed, but you could literally just be roommates renting an apartment and decide to be roommates and double up and buy a house, right? It's, it's, really, it's really that simple. And a lot of people, you know, they might be scared to, to get into an arrangement with someone. And what we say is just make sure you have everything in writing, sure. right? So if you have all the terms in writing, you have a contract where you feel comfortable about buying with someone, but... It's really, it's really the only way for a lot of people. Yeah. Right so now. walk They're, me through what happens if something goes south, right? Let's say one of the two roommates we're having this conversation over coffee. Somebody loses a job, right? right. Un, un, unable to fulfill their obligation financially in part of that agreement. How would you work through that? Because I don't think you want to punish somebody if your friends is not like you. Like, screw you, get out of my house. So how do you solve for that? And like, what would you put in writing to ensure in case something like that happens? Yeah. So say someone, that person needed to, they couldn't pay and they need to move back in with their parents or, you know, they needed to move somewhere else for a job. They have the ability to plug in a renter to cover that amount and, and have it all, you know, paid for on, sure. on the mortgage. And then you always have the option to sell if something really goes wrong. And so having that all in writing and beforehand is is important. Well, I can just see that being more and more commonplace because we were uh, lamenting over home prices, you know, in these days. And obviously we're talking interest rates, which it's unavoidable conversation the last couple of years to talk about interest rates. And it just seems harder and harder and harder for people to buy homes. And so this double up sounds like a great solution. The benefit that you guys offer with the employer side, obviously the assistance you have with uh, locating the house, buying the house, contractual negotiations, mortgage, everything. It's just, it feels like it's just chipping away at some of those impediments to home ownership, which we know is good for the United States. We know it's good for people. It's good for our economy, for our culture. And so like, it sounds like you're putting together ways to sort of chip away at all those things that might be in the way currently in 2024. Um, so let me, before we jump, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about, let's position this. So I'm a consultant right now. You mentioned NFP is your broker. We obviously have audiences of, of all the agencies or a lot of the agencies in the country. So if I'm a consultant listening to this and I go, hey, I want to bring this to my employers. What do I need to know? What do I need to do? So help me kind of position it for them so they would know what to do in terms of next steps to work with you guys. Okay, so um, NFP is is the one we started with. Um, not to give other people recognition, but One Digital has been, come on. A great, great pretty, firm. Yeah, pretty, pretty strong. Yeah, but we have folks there. from all those to the moms and pops, right? The independent mm-hmm. brokerages that are looking for something new and unique to bring to folks. So I just want them to know what they need to know ultimately to come and reach out to you. Guys. Okay, so one of the things they know is we do pay them. So we create a marketing agreement for them so that they're they're going to make money on this. It's not a just a special add-on, wow, you got all these extra benefits. No, we're going to pay them for okay. their marketing efforts on that. And we'll sit down with them and go uh, through the numbers. Tommy likes to give the numbers on that. Really, it, it, if, if you have a 10,000 total population sure. of all people, which would be a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and then about 2% annually would buy. So- you know, there's some significant money in there, about 300K on that. Okay. Um, 
um, that we would look. In, but to the, the employer, market. ultimately, there's not necessarily a charge, right? Or it's nope. not a PPM charge, which is common for point solutions, right? See, okay. that's the beauty of this yeah. too, is you can offer it to them. It's all free. So then they position it, plant the seed for anybody that wants to use it, and then it starts to grow. And then one person experiences it, right? And it's all in how well we, we treat the customer to make it to the next level, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next person and the next person. So... Um, yeah, so it's completely free. It's a, the new, it's a new model. We're, we're going under the freemium model where we only get paid when someone purchases a home. Sure, we make sure. money on the real estate commission and then doing the loan. And so we've changed the model where we've cut out social media, we've cut out direct mail, and we said, okay, we can provide these these big savings to the customers with this, with that. And then we can also pay our benefit brokers and it works out for everyone. It's our new channel and our new distribution. I, and you said it, the QR code that you guys create is tied to that consultant. So the co consultant ultimately would get credit if that's that employer's QR code and that's a client of theirs, right? So ultimately, I mean, there's incentive there, right? It's a, you, you mentioned there's a possibility of significant income, but I think yeah. these consultants ultimately, their jobs are to be innovative, to be out in front and going, what's in the marketplace? What are employers demanding? What are things that I need to bring to the table to them that's outside of the box, right? As they mm -hmm. continue to battle to recruit and retain great employees, this is one of those things that's a nice little arrow in their quiver to be able to bring. Do you ever have the event, and I know it's relatively early, where an employer gets oversubscribed, where like all of a sudden the demand is way higher than expected, and they go, oh, we didn't allocate enough money over here for these many down payments. Has that ever happened? We or? haven't okay. yet, but some have adjusted it in fear of that. Like yeah, some may enough. offer five when really they'd offer 10 if they knew. But it's, what if this many, uh, you know, so... Um, yeah, so there is a little bit of that in analyzing how much they want to budget for this. And sometimes the employers forget how much they spend on recruiting and training and redoing. And so, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, yeah, point, you'd spend as much money retraining somebody as you would giving the down payment to somebody that you know you can keep. Giving the down payment to five or six people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's best case scenario if you have people over utilize. Yeah, so I mean, you have that many people locked in. Serious for, ROI, I mean, yeah. potential here yeah. as well, right? Yeah. Okay. So then, what are the kind of, and let's move towards the end and obviously think about expansion. Like, what are the, current constraints right now to growth. There's just awareness of this benefit existing, right? And so this is only feasible, at least for you guys within 10 states today, because yes. your services around that benefit also have to be provided, right? Yes. You guys have to be the agent and do the mortgage as, as well, correct? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. And then, but in the future is to be able to do this everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have, you know, our previous company, we were in 45 states. So we know how to run a business in, at, at a, a, you know, a bigger multi-state level. And then, so it's just now getting the word out to all of these and working with the benefit brokers. And it's really, I mean, it's kind of an exciting journey for us mm -hmm. now because this is, you know, unseen un, uh, territory for us. Sure. And so we're, you know, we're excited to work with these guys and we're excited to expand. We're talking, there are a few different states that people say, oh, well, we have operations in this state and that state. And so we're looking at, you know, other possibilities for expansion into additional states now. Okay. Um, but we see over the next five years, we're, we'll be in almost all states then. Absolutely. And I could see this be a very common benefit that's offered, right? And I mean, and then there's no, um, from an employer perspective, is there anything to think about from a payroll or, you know, taxable uh, component to this that they need to be aware of? So, uh, you know, about 50% of the people are going to just try it on first. So, okay. and that, and that's all free. And so they, you know, oh, hey, how's it working? And what do people, what do people feel afterwards? And are they excited about what they got out of it? And then from there, it could progress. So they want to prove concept that it even is worth using as a, as, sure. a, as a program. And then they'll move into, hey, let's give some money on this and let's, you know, hold on to some of these great people that we have coming in. Yeah. Um, and kind of get rid of the old mentality of hire, then train, then let them go, and then hire and train, let them watch them go to somebody else, you know. Um, so, yeah. So I, like, I mean, I, I could see this expanding. And that's when you guys came to me and said, hey, we'd like to talk about this. And we had a little intro call. I'm like, well, I've never even heard of anything like this. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, of, course, yeah. of course, I want to feature it because yeah. it, it's, it crosses over every I think every human being has some 
interest in real estate, right? It, you know, for all the reasons we just discussed. But then to tie it to the world of what I do on a daily basis, which is employee benefits and talk about all those things. Again, it's just one of those really cool things that's never been featured on the show before. And so I was more than uh, anxious to, to do it. I, I, I have to ask though, since you guys are in the chair and you're real estate pros, what do you think is going to happen in the next couple of years with interest rates and things like that? Or do you see home prices staying steady? Do you see them coming down? I mean, give me your crystal ball perspective real quick since I've got a couple of pros sitting. So with me. I would say interest rates, you know, if over the next couple of years, not much action here this year. Okay. Maybe a, li you know, a little bit of a downward pressure to, um, you know, get some stimulation. The challenge we face is, you know, guys like you with the 3% interest rate, mm -hmm. where are you going to go? So, um, so then, I mean, it's just basic economics, right? And that is the supply for new buyers isn't that great. Now we've seen a little tweak in the amount of inventory, but it's not that substantial. So the prices you see, I mean, just in this very year where interest rates went from, you know, five and a half last year to seven, um, and prices still went up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in, in almost all uh, all areas. So the demand for housing is so great that we can't see out. I mean, all the experts, even the private equity firms are saying we're going to keep buying because it's so they, all there. So you don't necessarily see a large correction, at least on the horizon. You know, so whether from so, an interest rate or a pricing perspective. Right. So so the days of three percent interest rates may be. I Maybe think, gone forever. Yeah, I think we need to get to a point where the interest rates come down just enough where people feel comfortable about actually selling and giving up that interest rate yeah. to go somewhere else to kind of free up the entire market. But yeah, prices. So it's a, there's an equilibrium somewhere, somewhere, right? Yeah. Because um, that's the way we look at it. And I, I won't bore everybody and we'll, we'll wrap up the podcast, but that's the way we look at it buying five or six years ago, essentially being priced out of our own home should we go to try buy it again, not to mention a doubling of the interest rate. And it's like, why would anybody, if you, basic economics, like you said, why would anybody make that decision? Well, maybe if you're desperate for a new home or maybe your income went up so three, precipitously. It's the three Ds. Three Ds, what is the three Ds? <laughs> um, uh, death divorce or uh, debt riddled. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. If you have any of those or if you have no debt, so you could have the no debt sure. cash buyers. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Uh, divorce people are, are selling and, and buying. Dead people are selling. So, or if you have too much debt, you have to sell off and, and regroup. Okay. So yeah, it's definitely so outside of those and it's unlikely. Yeah. So that, that's just really, it's, it's almost, it's been fascinating because we were talking about the history of like when my parents were dealing with interest rates in the teens, yeah. you know? Yeah. So like we got spoiled with these crazy low ones and now it's, it's sort of back to a more normal level, but based on what we had just a few years ago, especially pre COVID to now, it's just, it feels like a shock to the system. Yeah. And I'm just kind of in this wait and see mode to say what's going to happen for my wife and I decide to do anything different at, at the moment. Well, you know, you just got to ease through this. Everybody, you, you know, calculating on a 3% interest rate. And so, you know, over time we forget. And so a few years down the road, the three percenters for the new buyers coming in, they won't use that as a comparison. So it's I'll buy whatever I can at this. And then and that's where the double up program comes in so yeah. nicely because I mean, it's just so hard to buy now. So I believe you. Uh, so you have to go with all your resources. And and like if you can if you if the both of you work at a particular company and you're both getting a benefit of, you know, a down payment assistance from your employer, you could literally get into a home for almost no money. If I was single and working for an employer that did this, I would be recruiting everybody. Like, who wants to live with me? Who wants to double up and double up on the benefit too? Let's go buy a home. You yeah, know? Yeah, it seems yeah. like it seems silly, but I mean, why not? Right? Why wouldn't you do that? Well, guys, I know obviously I'll tag you both. We'll tag your company and all the posts, but best way to get a hold of you, reach out to you, what, what would you recommend? Is it LinkedIn or something else? We're, to... we're very active on LinkedIn. Okay. LinkedIn we have. Yeah. Okay. A lot of our employees are. That's how we are, connected. So, so and that, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's probably the easiest place to get a hold of me as well. Well, guys, I'm very hopeful ultimately that uh, you get some activity out of this. It's super cool. Uh, thanks for making the effort to come down. And I know you got a lunch to get to, so we'll get you on your way. But maybe we'll come and revisit this in a couple years and see now if you expand to your 50th state. We'll yeah, yeah, we have together. to. Yeah. We definitely have to. Awesome. Well, thank we you so much it. again, guys. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Yeah. yeah.